Today we visit historic Jones Store in Smith Station, Alabama. This, friends, is a brand new museum showcasing local history. And today is the grand opening. Turnout seems good. We have a photographer and us. We wait out front for about 15 minutes for the current tour to finish. And more people arrive for hours. I'll leave the dialogue to the professionals. Please sign the book. We want to ensure that all of your names are represented in history today. particularly historic day as it's opening day of the historic Jones Store Museum. The historic Jones Store Museum serves as an Alabama 200, a bicentennial celebration museum. As part of the Alabama 200 bicentennial year, we are commemorating stories of our people, places, and events that shaped our path to statehood. This serves as the second of three events representing Smith Station and Lee County as an Alabama 200 participator. The other events are located, one of them is located in Smith Station City Hall. Smith Station City Hall presents two exhibit galleries, one featuring student artists in our community and the other arts professionals. In addition to that, we also have an exhibit going to the Alabama State Capitol as part of the Governor's Alabama 200 finale celebrations beginning on December 14th of this year. The Jones Store Museum was a general store located on Lee County Road 430, a short distance from here. Behind the store was an airfield. We're currently collecting data uh, related to aviation history in our community. When the Lee County Board of Education purchased the land where our current Smith Station High School is located, they transported the museum across the tracks. A local developer then offered the, the store as a donation to the city. It was then that our visionary mayor set to work envisioning what this museum, what this store could become as far as a collection site for stories, artifacts, and archives to then educate our people of our heritage. That said, I'd like to direct your attention to the general store side of the museum. Located on the front wall, nearest the door and window, we have an archaic artifacts exhibit. These archaic artifacts are from prehistoric times. They are tools and various implements sculpted by early Native Americans to this area. <clears throat> Located on the upper shelf, we have Mr. Jones' hat. Mr. George Jones and Miss Maggie Jones were the proprietors of this establishment. This counter is original to the Jones store. We believe the Jones store was operational from the 1920s, and we know it concluded operations in the late 1970s. The store, we believe, was built in either 1918 or 1919, but certainly one of the two. The scale at the end, where you signed the guest book, is the original scale from the Pittman store. The Jones store and the Pittman store were two early stores of convenience in our rural community. The Pittman store was located near the current Smith Station post office. The cash box is original to the Jones store. <clears throat> the ledgers on the top shelf are also belonging to Mr. George Jones. There are various other bits of nostalgia located within this illustrative exhibit, illustrating what a general store might have featured as far as products or local harvested goods. Some of these items are nostalgic in nature. You may remember some of them. Many of them would have also been available via mail order. We have many nostalgic tins in this location as well. Some of the earlier artifacts were actually located or discovered in storefront basements 
on Broadway in Columbus, Georgia. Wow. The honoree cases here, located in the center of the museum, relate to our earliest records of Smith Station history and progress forward to modern time. We have S.L. Mullen. S.L. Mullen is honored here today as one of our early settlers as well. He was also a prominent landowner who contributed to establishing Smith Station as we know it. Um, <clears throat> the Mullen family donated land for establishing Philadelphia Church and Mount Olive Church. Two things to mention about the, um, to highlight as far as the Mullen farm were, they were known for their pecan orchards and they were also known for their hay farming. Still today, the hay sign is located along 430, not too far from where the original John Moore was. As you progress this way, you'll also see honored citizens such as Miss Melinda Coker. Miss Melinda Coker was an early midwife. She was a prominent midwife, um, delivering many of our current citizens as well. Miss Melinda Coker would collaborate with local veterinarian, Dr. George Samuel Jones, to deliver our babies in this rural community. Above her exhibit, you'll find E.L. Debra. E.L. Debra was the first and only principal of Wakuchi School. Wakuchi School was established by local citizens of the Wakuchi, well, actually Salem area, when they discovered, they, they felt it important to establish a school for the African American children in our community. This school was established before segregation, um, desegregation, I'm sorry, and E.L. Debro was also the first African American principal in Lee County. I'm going to turn over this tour to Carter Copeland. Um, right here, we have many interactive exhibits inside of our museum. So I asked, how about, do you want to come up here and demonstrate for me? So we have up here a vintage map of the United States. And as all of you know, Coke bottles were distributed throughout the United States. And in here, we have bottles all the way ranging from California to Virginia. So she's going to grab one bottle, and I'm going to grab another bottle. Whichever bottle is furthest from the city of Smith Station wins. <laughs> What do you have? I have New Bern. Jacksonville. You have Jacksonville. Let's see. New Bern. We have Jacksonville right there. And we have New Bern right there. So that means I win. But you get candy anyways for <laughs> Thank you so much. So all these bottles right here are vintage bottles, as well as this machine right here is a more retro Coca-Cola machine. Um, we have a vintage diner clock right here that's actually outfitted with neon. Um, and this is actually a concentrate Coke bottle that you would take to diners and be given to them and they would use for early fountain drinks and early fountain machines. Uh, up here we have the different Coke bottles that we had throughout the centuries. Um, we have original runs of Coca-Cola right here. Um, and then right here we have a party favor from the wedding of Princess Diana and Prince Charles of Great Britain that was only given out to people that attended that wedding. So we're very proud of being able to get that. Um, over here we bring you into the more modern Smith Station history, catastrophic Smith Station history. This is our tornado corner featuring items from people's homes, uh, schools, businesses that were ripped away from people. Um, we have images uh, from disaster relief as well as paintings from students at West Smith Station and we have a video that all of you can watch. I will actually turn it this way so all of you can see it a little bit better. It features news clips that we actually received from different uh, outlet citizens. This corner right here, this is the Atlanta Journal. It's from the first Auburn-Georgia game uh, from 1892. Uh, it's been proven real, and it's insured. Um, so we have that small exhibit over there. We keep that in safe hands. That's one of our pride and joy. Uh, 
And then right here, we had a bench that was made by a local citizen. Uh, he took his time and efforts and a lot of talent to make this bench. And it's actually from homes that were destroyed in the tornado. On there, we have various pictures of citizens. Um, we have a picture right here that was torn out of someone's house. Uh, we have aerial footage, uh, teddy bears, actually. Um, Spire came in and gave all the students teddy bears um, and helped them in whatever way they thought was necessary. Uh, right here, we have our own local celebrity. Um, that's Conway Tweedy, or Harold Jenkins, as some citizens know him as. Uh, we have clips from one of his concerts. We have his gold record of Hello Darling that we actually were given directly from the Conway Twitty estate. Uh, and right here we have, um, for a long time, I remember growing up as a kid, my grandmother would always tell me, you know, Conway Twitty is from Smith Station. Conway Twitty is from Smith Station. And I just thought she was crazy. Um, until my dad came and told me that we found a program from one of the uh, events at Smith Station that shows where Harold Jenkins did the invitation. Wow. So at that moment, we found out that he actually did go to Smith Station High School. We actually have a picture of him and a resident right here in front of her house. It's Mr. Harden. We have one of his uh, posters from his early concerts. And then we move on to our Smith Station section where we have a newspaper clipping that we since now have found an original newspaper clipping of that. Uh, it speaks of a modern school. It's dated 1927. It's pretty funny how not, back then that was considered modern. Now we consider that rustic. Uh, but it speaks of a new school that they're planning to build that is long since gone. Uh, and then we have the first African American drum major of Smith Station High School, which was huge for Smith Station. Uh, over here we have William Earl Stone, um, Seaman First Class. He actually was a student at Smith Station High School and he was the first death and casualty in World War II. Um, we have his original uniform, um, several things that were his, uh, mail that was his while he was over there. He actually um, lost his life in Sicily fighting for our country. Um, we have a clip, we have taps. Um, it's just incredible to be a city where someone would give their life um, for our country. And we have this demonstration right here just to be able to know that we had a student that was not much older than I am that sacrificed his life for our country and our city and a much larger cause than himself. And then over here, we have a illustration of the Jones family, um, what they would have lived their daily lives like, yeah. how they would have eaten and gone about their day and worked. Uh, we have this table right here is actually handmade, and it's from the Pittman store that would have been right next to the post office, if anyone knows where that is. Um, in these cases, we have Miss Jones's personal items, and in this case, we have Mr. Jones's personal items, including ledgers and journals and keys. Um, we have Miss Jones' class, uh, her glasses, and actually we have a coin purse with rations from World War II that she would have used um, during that time. And we have her actual Bible right here. Uh, Miss Jones is singing. Uh, many people, residents of Smith Station, that remember the Jones store say that many days you would come in here and Miss Jones would be mopping the floor or making food in her kitchen and be singing constantly while doing all of that. Um, we thank you for coming to the beautiful city of Smith Station and our historic Jones store. Mayor Bubba Copeland. Well, we, this is a labor of love. We started the Jones store in an effort to uh, save Smith Station's history. Smith Station was founded 17 years ago in 2001. We made no efforts whatsoever to preserve what we had. So what we did is we got together with the formed a historical commission and we thought about saving history. We've done a great job. I hope you're able to come out and tour it. If you see it on YouTube from whatever part of the United States that you see, thank you for watching. And uh, if you want to be a part of Smith Station, please come by and join us. It'll be open Tuesday and Thursday from 10 to 4 um, every week and by appointment. If you want to do a special appointment, if you're traveling through, you can call City Hall and set up an appointment and you'll have a private tour.